Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about microphones. Now we're going to have a look at this type of microphone. This is the Electret microphone, also known as a condenser mic, or a FET mic. And they're easy to find, and they're quite inexpensive. So if you have a project where you need to detect sound, or you need some voice audio, then you can use one of these microphones. Now there's two types, there's two configurations. There's the three pin, and there's a two pin. This is the three pin type. You can see there's three solder pads. So the red wire is your power. And then there's a coaxial cable uh, for the signal output. Now the one next to it is a, is a two pin variety. And you can see the very top pin is your ground and it's connected to the case of the microphone and the, and the bottom one is your signal output. So in this video we're going to look at how to interface and power up one of these microphones and actually amplify the small signal to a signal that's usable for our projects. Okay, the main component inside electric mic element is a capacitor or a condenser. Now a capacitor is just two plates, and we can see the two plates here, here's our first plate, here's our second plate. Now this plate is stationary, it's fixed, it cannot move, and this plate is flexible, and it can move. Now this capacitor is permanently charged, and the secret behind that is the dielectric in between the two plates. Now when sound wave hits the first plate, we'll get a voltage output on the second plate, we'll get audio output. Now this will be a very small signal, and it will be very high impedance, so it will be easy to load down. So we have to buffer it in some way. So inside the mic element is a FET transistor right here, which buffers the signal from, from this plate to the output. So basically it's an impedance converter from high impedance to a low impedance. So this is a two terminal microphone. You can see the two terminals. There's your first terminal, there's your second terminal. So it's up to you to supply a 1K ohm resistor to 5 volts, that's your load resistor, and a capacitor. So you DC block any voltage uh, from the power supply, and this would be your output. So this is your two-pin electric mic element. Now we'll have a look at the three-pin. So it's basically the same. We have the same capacitor set up, and we have a FET. But inside the FET, there's actually the, the resistor is internal to, this, to the FET. So we don't have to bother about the, the load resistor. So there's your three pins. So there's your power that feeds through the resistor to the FET. And there's your output. So you need an output capacitor. And the third terminal goes to ground. So this is your three-terminal electric mic element. Okay, here's the wiring diagram of a two-terminal electric mic element. We can see on the top is our ground pin. It's our top pin. It's connected to the outer ring. And our bottom pin is our, is our uh, audio output. And here's a block diagram of our microphone element. We can see our capacitor element, which is feeding our buffer. That's our FET. And there's our two-pin output. So the bottom one is your ground. And your top one is, is your output. So it's up to you to supply a 1K ohm resistor to 5 volts, and then you'll get your output and your ground. Okay, here's the wiring diagram of a 3-pin electric mic element. And we can see the three solder pads, and they're labeled 1, 2, and 3. In our schematic diagram, you can see pin 1 is your 5 volts, it's your red wire. Pin 2 is your output, and pin 3 is ground. So you have to supply a blocking capacitor on pin 2, and supply 5 volts to pin 1, and just ground pin 3. So there's your uh, wiring diagram for a 3-pin electric mic element. Okay, I have built a little microphone amplifier circuit on my breadboard to boost the signal output of my microphone element. I'm using a 3-pin microphone element, you can see here. Now, usually when I build a microphone amplifier, I use a low-noise op-amp, or I build it with discrete transistors. But in this case, I just wanted to do something different. I'm building this little amplifier using a logical inverter chip, a CD4069, and I'm using it in linear mode. So I'm using two of the inverters, so they're both cascaded, so I get a nice output around 4 volts peak to peak. Now when you power up uh, these uh, electric microphones, um, you've got to make sure that the power to the, to the power lead is clean. So if you have any ripple on your power supply, it's actually going to get into your output signal. So that's very important. So as you can see here, I little have a little RC little network to filter out the voltage that's feeding uh, the microphone, the power to the microphone. So we'll, uh, we'll power this up and we'll see how sensitive uh, this microphone is. Okay, I have the output of my amplifier fed into my scope. And you can see I'm getting a pretty good signal. It's about 4 volts peak to peak. And it's pretty sensitive. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's another example of how we can build a little microphone amplifier using logical inverters in linear mode. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the microphone amplifier that I built in my breadboard. 
using a CD4069 CMOS inverter chip. Now if you look at the very left you can see the microphone element and it's the three pin variety. There's my three pins, one, two, and three. Now pin one is the power to the element and has to be clean so if you have a noisy power supply you can put in this little RC network otherwise you'll get noise getting into your amplifier or on your output from your power supply. Now the output of the microphone pin two is fed into the input of this inverter which is in linear mode. I was put into linear mode by this 4.7 meg, meg resistor from the output to the input so it becomes an amplifier and I have two of them cascaded so I could get a very high output and they're all capacitively coupled so that so the biases won't interfere with each other. So the resistors are not critical you can use from 1 meg to 10 meg and the capacitors aren't very critical either but the bandwidth of this amplifier is pretty high so if you want to cut down on some of the high frequency noise, you could actually put a small, a small capacitor across uh, the 4.7 meg resistor on the last stage, and that'll cut down some of the high frequency noise on your output. Okay, now you know how these microphones work, and you can incorporate them in your own projects. I've used them a lot. They work pretty well. Here's a project that I built. It's called a room monitor. You hook this up to your phone line, and then you call it, say with your cell phone, you let it ring once, and then hang up. If you call it back within 10 seconds, the circuit will connect this, this microphone to the phone line, and you could actually monitor your house if you're off on vacation. So it's very sensitive. I could actually monitor the whole floor of a house with this, with this microphone. So it's, they're very, very sensitive. Very inexpensive, and easy to use, easy to incorporate into your projects. So I hope this video gave you some ideas how to use these little microphones so you can incorporate them into your own projects.